Welcome to Lenny's Math Videos. Today we're going to look at tangrams. Tangrams are an ancient Chinese puzzle. Stories have been told that uh, in the ancient times that a square piece of glass was dropped and broke into the seven tangram shapes. Uh, we're going to make the tangram shapes. We need to start with a square piece of paper and, and I always think it's good to, to look at the math puzzle. Well, how could you take a square piece of, or a rectangular piece of paper and turn it into a square? You might pose that as a problem to start your students thinking about it. The easiest way is to fold uh, like this so you get a shape and you can see the extra that I have here. Uh, what I end up with is I end up with a, a trapezoid. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut off this piece um, that's extra on the side. And you want to stress with your students that this is not part of the tangram uh, puzzle. So we're going to put it over there. And so I end up with a square. We want to think of the area of this square as being one. And what we're going to do is we fold it along one of the diagonals or the lines of symmetry. So what we have is we have two shapes that are exactly the same size. And what we end up with is a right isosceles triangle. Uh, these two legs are the same size because they were from the square, and this is the hypotenuse. We're going to take this, and what we're going to do with my right isosceles triangle is we're going to fold it in half. And we're going to fold it in half by going in this direction. So we're going to fold it in half, and we're going to fold. And as we're going to do many times, we're going to cut along the crease. So we're going to unfold it and cut along the crease. And so what I end up with is two right isosceles triangles. Uh, again, the two legs are the same size as is the, and, the, and then you have the hypotenuse. Uh, the area of this is equal to this, and the area of this as related to the whole square is one-fourth. And so this area is one-half. And, and this is kind of an optical illusion, but if you hold your two right isosceles triangles like this, that means that this area down here is the same as the area up above, which doesn't look that way. But if I just flip my triangle so that it's this way, it's easy to see that this area and this area are the same. So I'm going to put these two smaller ones aside and I'm going to work with my larger uh, triangle that's half of the square that I started with. I need to find the midpoint or the center of the bottom. So I'm going to fold. I'm not going to crease all the way up. I'm just going to put a little mark at the bottom. And then I'm going to take my top vertex and I'm going to fold it down so that it meets at the center point that I found. And I'm going to put a crease across here. The shape that I end up with is a trapezoid. Uh, this is an isosceles trapezoid because this side and this side are the same length. These two sides are parallel to each other. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the shape um, and it probably comes as no surprise that what I'm ending up with is another right isosceles triangle. Uh, it's one half of the area of this, so it's going to be one eighth of my total area. Um, I'm going to take my trapezoid now that I had and I'm going to fold from one of the corners to the center, the one that I had marked. And what I end up with is, I, I end up with a trapezoid. In this case, it's not a isosceles triangle, um, but it still is a trapezoid. And I'm going to cut off this shape over here. And notice again, what I get is I get a right isosceles triangle. I'm going to leave it up to you to see how the area of this one compares to the area of the whole square that I started with. I'm going to take next take my trapezoid that I have, and I'm going to fold um, back again from the center and so I end up with again another smaller trapezoid but I'm going to get a little different shape now. I end up with this shape here which is a square. So I'm going to take that square and once again you'd want to compare the area of this square to the total area. Um, my trapezoid I have, this is probably the most difficult fold so I'm going to do this a little bit uh, slower but what I want to do is I'm going to take my two fingers here and I'm going to move those two so that they fold together. And I'll make the fold and then I'll unfold it so you can see if you got it correct. But what I end up with is I end up with a parallelogram because the opposite sides are parallel and the opposite sides are parallel. And so I end up with this shape here. So once again, I made the fold like that. 
I'm going to cut that shape off, and that shape also is a right isosceles triangle. And again, you'd want to compare that area to the area of the total part. Now, what I've ended up with is seven pieces. So on your table, you have seven pieces of paper. And this is always fun because as easy as it might seem, all these seven pieces came from a, a square piece of paper, but it's not that easy to put them back together. So I'm going to ask you to stop the video now because in just a second, I'm going to show what it, what it should look like when it's done. But see if you can get it without looking at the video. Here's what you should have come up with, or something similar to this, to get the seven 10 gram pieces. And so as you notice, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces, which are 10 grams. And uh, they put together to make the square, but it's always kind of a challenge to do that. Right? Uh, I'm gonna move you over to my computer so you can see this is a wood 10 gram puzzle. And You'll see many of these puzzles, and, and there's lots of websites that have these. And as you, as you look at this, you'll see that what you want to do with this is all of these shapes were made up from the seven 10-gram uh, pieces. Uh, I challenge my students not to put them together, but just to kind of create some pictures, and these are some that they created. Here's a basketball one. Here's a dragon one. Uh, here's a dog one. It, it's always fun uh, when you challenge students like this, and maybe not always the best math students, but you have some artistic students that really shine at this and like the opportunity to excel. Here's a fish one. Uh, here's probably one of my favorites. This was a, an exceptional artistic student uh, who drew Madonna. Uh, with tangrams, there, there's several activities that you can do. Uh, again, you're just starting from a single piece of paper, but you can cover the shape as I talked about. Uh, if the whole square was a cake and it cost $10, how much would each piece cost? So that gets into the shapes and the, and the sizes. Um, and then you can create the design, as I said. Uh, once again, my name is Lenny Vermoss, and here's my email address as well as my home website. Um, you'll also, if you go to this website, it's a link from mine, but it's a geometry paper folding. You'll find this activity and some other paper folding activities, as well as a couple documents that go with this. Um, and then also I have links to these sites. These are websites that have uh, links that have other activities or things that you can do with 10 grams. Um, so I hope that you enjoy your time making uh, tangrams. I'm sure your kids will enjoy that as well as enjoy learning math. So thank you very much.